hi guys welcome back to my channel in this video i'm going to show you how to configure dynamic network address translation okay so in the previous class guys we learned how to configure static NAT okay and in that class guys we said to configure static NAT depending on your tech topology I mean the first step that you should involve was to configure IP address then you configure the routing protocol and finally you configure network address translation okay and we use this diagram okay so in our class today guys we are going to use the same diagram to configure dynamic NAT okay so guys before we may proceed kindly suppose you will not subscribe support our channel hit on the subscribe button like our video and drop a comment below thank you so much and let's begin okay so dynamic NAT configuration dynamic NAT configuration what do you mean by dynamic NAT? Dynamic Network Address Translation In Dynamic Network Translation guys, a single private IP address is translated into a single public IP address from a pool of public IP addresses. It's different from static NAT that we learned in the previous class that said that it's one-to-one -one mapping. In static NAT, it's one-to-one -one mapping. For example, if you have 1000 devices that wants to access the internet, then you must purchase 1000 public IP address. But for the case of dynamic NAT guys, the private IP addresses are translated from a pool of public IP addresses. Okay, so you can have 1000 IP addresses, private IP addresses, and you only purchase 20 public IP addresses. So these 1000 private IP addresses will share these 20 public IP addresses in dynamic NAT. So without any further ado, let's go to the configuration part. IP addresses. We have already configured IP addresses to the router's interface and the host devices in the network. Okay? And suppose you don't know how to do that, kindly watch on the first video. It's it is illustrated there okay the same case for the routing protocol so basically what we will configure today is dynamic NAT so I'll modify this to be dynamic NAT dynamic NAT so the steps to configure dynamic NAT so remember to configure static NAT guys we were entering an interface whether it is a NAT inside or NAT outside for example, these are the internal users, okay? And this is the internet. These internal users wants to access these servers, okay? That are on the internet. So they must use a public IP address to access the internet. And for them to use a public IP address, there must be a mechanism for translation because they are configured with a private IP address, okay? This is the private IP address. Let me just show you. Go to desktop. This is the private IP address. Okay. This one. Plus the parameters that are here. Okay. So with the private IP address, they cannot access the internet. They must use a public IP address. And for them to use a public IP address, you know, there must be a device that, that is able to translate private into public IP address which is in this case this router here so this router here will do the translation so this interface will call it IP NAT inside and this one going outside it will be called IP NAT outside okay and to configure static NAT also we we went ahead to say IP NAT inside source this one for example sorry this computer here must use one unique public IP address to access the internet. So we specified that the computer will use 20.0.0.3 while the second computer will use 20.0.0.4 okay and to verify and to verify the configuration of NAT we we use a command to display them okay show IP NAT translation 
okay so without any further ado guys again let's begin to configure dynamic nut so dynamic nut we have steps to follow guys okay we have steps to follow so these are the steps the first step here guys is to specify whether an interface is not inside or outside okay then after we have specified that this is not inside and this is not outside guys we create okay a list of standard access list we create a standard access list so we create standard access list okay after creating standard access list guys we're going to create a pool of public IP addresses number three is to create pool of public IP addresses okay then finally guys we are going to map this pool with the standard access list okay so three four I mean mapping the pool with access control list very simple guys and this one i'm going to show you so you don't need to worry about anything the first step when you're configuring a dynamic nut guys you specify whether it's an interface is not inside or not outside okay then you create standard access list a standard access control list okay after creating standard access control list guys now you create a pool of public IP addresses that you want these host devices to use while communicating with the, these servers on the internet, okay? After creating the pool of public IP addresses, guys, now you map the pool with the access control list, okay? And now to do it, let me show you. I'll just put it up here how to do it i'll comment again so let's do step one step one is to specify whether an interface is not inside or not outside so for example this one this is not inside okay this is outside okay so this one is gig 00 interface gig 0 0 okay then ip not inside very simple then we go to interface serial 0 0 0 then IP not outside very very simple guys as you can see very simple okay and now step two: create standard access control list how do we create a standard access control list watch very keenly so we are going to say access list let's say uh, 10 permit this network this is 10.1 this is 192.168.1.0 with a subnet mass of this one so it's 192.168.1.0 then the wildcard mask 0 .0 0.0.0.255 okay we have created access control is a standard access control is remember we have two access control is standard and extended one so this is standard extended one start from 100 access list 100 101 you know and so on and so forth okay so this is a standard access control list so access list 10 permit this network okay the router will permit an ip address within the network okay so create a pool of public IP addresses. Watch very clean, guys. Step three. 
IP NAT pool. Okay. Now we name the pool. Let's say GTH. Okay. IP NAT pool. We name the pool GTH. Then that range. We want the addresses to. We want how many addresses? Let's say 20 here. Now we use here. Okay. 20 dot zero dot zero dot let's say start from three two because here was dot one yes dot two okay so from dot three okay two twenty dot twenty uh, sorry dot zero dot zero dot uh, let's say ten okay okay then the subnet mask which is a uh, 255.255.255.0 very simple guys very simple very very simple what we did guys the first step was to identify whether it's not inside or outside so gig 00 is IP not inside serial, serial 20 was uh, IP not outside then you create Ethernet access controllers in which in this case we created access list 10 permit this network okay then we created a pool how do we create a pool i pin at pool then you name that pool okay gt then the range of ip addresses that you want the range of public ip addresses that you want the internal users to use while communicating with the servers okay and now finally let's map pool with the access control list so it is IP, we say IP not inside source, very simple, list, which list did you create list 10, okay, then which pool, we are mapping the list with the pool, okay, pool gtech, very simple guys, so guys, let's go to the configuration. Remember in this router guys, we already configured static NAT. So I will go to this router here and disable static NAT before we can configure dynamic NAT. So I'll do that one very fast. So guys to disable static NAT, what we're going to do is to, de to negate the command that we use to configure static NAT. So for example, this computer here, we used IP NAT inside source static static this one 192.168.1.2 to access the internet through which public IP address 20.0.0.3 okay so we are going to negate this command so that it can be removed so it say you say no IP not inside this one Okay, and hit enter. Another one, it was dot four. Then here was, here was dot three. And hit enter. Then do right. Then exit. So let's configure dynamic not. Okay. So you say config t. Config t. Then interface gig zero slash zero. IP NAT inside you hit enter then interface serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 IP NAT outside exit then the second step guys is to create standard access controllers and how do we create standard access control is this one okay IP access control is 10 permit this network with their wildcard mask of that one okay so i'll go and say access con access list 10 permit 192.168.1.0 0 0.0.0.255 0 .0 wildcard mask if you don't know how to calculate wildcard mask guys kind of research about it it's very important then after creating access controllers guys we create a pool a pool of 
public IP address. How do we create a pool of public IP addresses? IP not pool, that one, then you give the range of IP addresses plus the subnet mask. Okay. So for example, IP not pool, sorry, pool JIT okay. 20.0.0.3. 20.0.0.0.10 okay then subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and you hit enter oh we are getting an error oh i forgot to write something here you say you should say here net say net mask okay one word that so you say this one net mask of this one okay so it's very simple i'll just type again ip not pull gtech then i'll copy this to save time then paste then net mask net mask 255.255.255.0 and you hit enter okay we have created access control list and the pool. So what do we do? We map the pool with the access control list. So we say IP not inside source list 10. Okay. Then pool gth. Hit enter. Do right and exit so let's verify our configuration the first thing that we'll do we will try to pin from the pcs to the server so i'll say pin 10.10.10.3 just give it time i believe it will ping successfully and i'll go to the other pc also to try to ping it's pinging so ping 192.168.1. Sorry, it's 10.10.10.3. It's ping successfully. So let's go to the router to verify the configuration. So I'll go to the right router and say show IP not trans translation and hit enter. Okay, as you can see, guys. As you can see guys this IP address 1.2 has used 20.0.0.3 20 to access the server okay don't worry about the last one okay one to the last the last part okay so for example this was 1.3 and it has used 20.0.0.4 to access the servers okay so it's very simple guys okay inside global inside local outside local and outside global if you don't understand the terms a class was already made on these terms so kindly we leave a link on the description part click on the link and you will access the class explaining all these four terms okay this is a protocol so the protocol here is icmp okay okay so basically guys that will mark the end of today's class kindly if you like our videos please subscribe support my channel guys and see you again in the next class of port address translation bye